I want to talk about the C word. Uh... Hi everyone. Um, today I wanted to talk about uh, some of the the C words. Okay, so the C word, and no, it's not that word that you think that it is. No, not that word that you just that popped into your head, like the one that I won't say. The C word. I want to talk about some C C. Which way do you see C C words? <laughs> <laughs> have certain connotations and um, child bearer caretaker um, and those are have like pretty positive connotations the C word is cougar crone <laughs> I'm an old wiki uh, crones, cougars, and not the cat, but crones uh, are often like the uh, shown as hags or, or something. And I will show you if you do a search for crone and Google what comes up. And it's basically says like an ugly witch or an ugly woman. Which is really rude because uh, crones were or are in fact women over 50 who having lived through so many experiences have a lot of knowledge that they can share. So, I want to change, see another C word, change, I want to change some of those perceptions. So I started to do some research too because there was a, somebody, there's a Facebook page called the Rainbow Crones and I'm like, what is a rainbow crone? It's like a rainbow crone, I gave a, a lesbian crone because, you know, I'm, I'm like the gay community uses rainbows so and I'm not like I totally am down with that <laughs> that's not I'm not like pointing it out and being like oh the gay community uses rainbows <laughs> Joseph Campbell, he also has a name with a C. And one of the things that he says is that um, for every hero who goes through a journey, they have three stages. Um, and I will insert here.
Okay, so for girls, they reach puberty, and then they go from childhood to being able to bear children themselves, even as children themselves, because some girls go into puberty very young. Um, and unfortunately, for many, many girls at this young age, they then become objects of desire because they have breasts that are visible, which that's a whole other video. But um, basically, so uh, for all women and girls, they have, you know, you're born. Okay, step one, born. <laughs> step two, puberty. Your first real rite of passage is going into womanhood, which uh, puberty to uh, becoming childbearing does not make you a woman. That makes you a young person who has the ability to have children. So one of the unfortunate things that happens to girls who after puberty, okay, after puberty they become objects of desire um, and unfortunately you know the objectification of women will have to be another day because that's just is like too complicated and I'm not an expert in any of these topics I'm simply sharing from my own experience and from knowledge that I've learned through the years unfortunately um, there are some cultures even still today that have these young people having children at like 14, 15 years old, which, or even younger. Um, and basically, mm, I don't think that's a good idea. Step three, childbearing. Or not, if you choose not to. Um, uh, either way, though, you're somehow uh, generally creating something and giving something to society if you're not having children, or if you're having children, then you may be nurturing them, or you may be doing both simultaneously, but, you know, it's very difficult. Um, but the next thing is that uh, after, well, I guess there's like the single versus married woman, or there's the married woman who's then divorced, there's the whole like old um, older men wanting to trade in their wives for younger women. Not all of them, obviously, but this is something that is. I'm not making this up. You know it's true. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm not talking about everyone. I'm saying this is something that happens frequently. Um, then there is. Um, women who maybe uh, they're 40 years old and they no longer have to really be responsible for their kids if they had them earlier or they're divorced or they're single or they've come into their own sexually because the hormones start to go mental um, especially if, I think maybe even if you didn't have children they might even go more mental because your body's saying like hey this is it this is your last chance so get pregnant so have lots of sex I don't care how <laughs> but our animal nature that's what happens um, and then okay so um, then there's if you didn't have children you might want to have children or even if you don't think that you mentally or emotionally want children your physical body your biology may say that you're gonna have children. if you're um, in your late 30s your biology may start to actually control you you know and and we have to kind of transcend this or just become like crazy sex maniacs <laughs> Nothing wrong with sex. Have lots of it. and But make sure it's safe if you don't want a baby. Or if you don't have diseases and you have multiple partners. So, use condoms. Um, anyway. <laughs> so, now that you had your sex ed lesson from Amy. Um, I want to say uh, another rite of passage is menopause. 
and uh, we start with a kind of like a pre-menopause. So they say they're making, you know, I don't know if it's the medical community that makes up all this stuff, like perimenopause and all these other things that, you know, because they want to try to make money or whatever. But basically, to me, I personally, from my own physical experience, it's like I was, I went through puberty at 14. I was a late bloomer. Um, then I had all of my years up until 50, and then it was like, boom, menopause. <laughs> so, <laughs> bam, hot flashes, sweating like profusely for like two years. <laughs> like you'd be fine one moment, and then the next moment you'd be like, cascades of water oozing down you. Anyway. So for me, that was a thing. I think I actually started like maybe like 49. No, maybe 50. No, it's 50. Anyway, it doesn't really matter because it happens unless you die first and then you don't have to worry about it. So the point is, if I even have a point, is that I don't like the word cougar. I think being called a predatory animal because biology is running you a little bit for this time or you have the desire to procreate, not nice. And many young men pursue older women. It's not all a one-way street where women pursue men. So older women pursue young men. So Google change that because that is so rude, your definition because that's the one that you selected. <laughs> the other one, crone, ugly old hag. Sorry, I wanna embrace that word. I wanna be like, oh, I'm a crone, that's cool, man. And maybe things are changing a little bit, but basically, it's not cool. Old ugly hag, really, for when, oh, this was like a word that was embraced by many traditions and cultures, and women were treated with respect. What the f Google? Dislike with like big thumbs down. Okay. Crone, cougar, negative connotations. Let's turn that frown upside down. <laughs> oh God Almighty. I need help. Seek help. Like, please subscribe down below, down below, Look at the terrible nails, down below, please subscribe to my channel, <laughs> please subscribe to my YouTube channel below. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch and leave a comment, have a conversation with me. I would love to discuss. Let's discuss. Thanks. Bye. Now, just because you turn 50 years old and you become a crone, does that mean that you're supposed to not wear makeup anymore? I mean, I just read an article that said, oh, here's like five tips for older women and how to wear makeup. Apparently, I'm not following any of them, but I don't really wear a lot of makeup anyway. But I, you know, it was like, I was reading them and I was thinking, fuck you. Like, if somebody wants to wear makeup, let them wear makeup. If that makes them feel good, then why should somebody stop wearing makeup?